morning everybody we're in Norway house Manitoba Cree Nation reserve and we're taking this portable office trailer down to Stonewall Manitoba we got to take it across the ice So there's a half kilometer uh, section of ice that's usually in the summertime you go across on a ferry. It's just a river that goes through here. It's not that big a deal, but uh, the first time I've ever driven on an ice road was in yesterday's vlog. That was coming into Norway House. The only way to get here is across the water. And in wintertime you can drive across the water. In summertime you gotta take the boat. But it's wintertime. So this will be my first time driving across the ice with a loaded trailer. This is an office trailer, so it's pretty heavy. Uh, we'll see what happens. The ice is very thick. I'm not expecting anything exciting to happen, but just the fact that I am driving over the water with a loaded truck and trailer is kind of exciting to me. It's, it's a first for everything. I've, I've lived in Manitoba my whole life, and there's ice roads all over the place up in Northern Manitoba, and I've never gone on one until today. I've never even driven out onto the ice to do to do ice fishing or anything like that. Never had a vehicle on frozen water until yesterday. And now it's gonna, be, you get it. I'm excited. Let's see what happens. I hope I don't fall through. Kistapenanik Mall. Did I say that right? I stopped in there just to make sure everything was, uh, Good to go. We'll check my load, check the trailer. Now we need to go that way. They got a traffic light. Good for them. You know, Blue Manort got a traffic light last year, too. Oh, Manitoba. We're going places. We don't quite know where, but we're going places. Got traffic lights now. All right, let's go. Let's go towards the ice road. a lot of stuff up here like I know I said it in yesterday's video but this is the furthest north I've ever been in my own province and we're only maybe halfway up to our border with Nunavut there's a lot more Manitoba up here yet most of the population myself included lives right along the southern border with the US That's where like 95, 99% of Manitobans live. Northern Manitoba, there's not much up here except for, you know, hydroelectric generating stations and uh, First Nation reserves and uh, oh, there's a few towns here and there. A lot of mines. I think we have a lot of nickel mines up here. Uh, I believe there's some diamond mines. Don't quote me on that, but. A lot of uh, raw natural resources under us right now. And I'm told there's also a lot of oil under the ground in Manitoba as well, but due to red tape and uh, politics, we haven't been able to get it out of there. We're sitting on it. This is a lot bigger of a community than I thought it would be up here. I was like, oh, this is way up north. There's no no way there's more than a couple hundred people. There's, there's a, probably like 20,000, I bet. I haven't looked at the population of Norway House, but there's got to be several, like maybe a couple of tens of thousands. A lot of people. I mean, they got a traffic light. In summertime, I bet this place is just gorgeous. It's beautiful. Right on the lake. Imagine the fishing here. We're coming up to the ice crossing again. Going the other way that we were uh, in yesterday's video. This is 
designated construction zone. I didn't see any construction here before. Maybe they're just talking about the detour because you sort of got to go around onto the ice here. How many of you have driven across the ice before on an ice road? Like this is actually a provincial highway. And I guess the ice gets too thick to run the ferry across in the winter. So the only other option is to uh, just drive across. So it says it's open. The max weight is uh, 39,000. I'll go to stop here, eh? Hold on. Say there. Uh, 39,500 kilograms. Here we go. Out onto the river. Take the trailer with me and onto the ice. They actually like plant little trees out here. I don't know why, because that's the water. I guess that's uh, just sort of to mark it for the snow plows. I don't even hear any cracking. That's a good sign. And there's the ferry. Looks like they're pulling it out of the water there. Interesting. Better take a little bit of a running start here. trucks going back that way. We didn't fall through. It's a good day. Check that one off the off the bucket list. It's a short ice road, but it's still an ice road. It still counts. And this is the Nelson River Channel, the generating station or hydroelectric station. It's actually called the Genpeg Generating Station. drove across this in yesterday's video. Now we're taking the trailer across today. A little bit of a narrow bridge through here, but there's not much traffic to worry about. This is where some of our electricity comes from. One of the stations. I don't know exactly how many of these Manitoba has, but we have quite a few, that's for sure. Looks like there's like a big resort or a lodge or something up there. neat. Oh, and Genpeg is that way. I guess Genpeg is a town. That would make sense. 
not just a generating station. I'm guessing the majority of that town is just the workers that maintain and work at that place. I don't know. wave at passing cars enthusiastically just for no reason. Just to see what they do, see if they wave back. I mean, I could do better than that. <laughs> see, now I'm wondering if they're wondering why I was waving. Are they gonna go home tonight trying to figure out who I was? Like, did I know him? Why was he waving at me? He acted like he knew me. Who was that? Who do I know that drives truck? Him texting all his friends. Was it you? Was it you? Watch this guy again. Is this a cop? No, it's not. Didn't even notice. Didn't look at me. I don't know. Things you do when you get bored on the highway. Sometimes I like to make funny faces at people as they pass by. Another accident scene coming up ahead here. It's been signs for about a mile already. And here's the flashing lights. I don't see any police here though. It looks like just tow trucks. So I guess it, uh, guess it isn't too serious. I see this guy's holding up a little stop sign for me here now. They're gonna let the other side through first. I put my four-way flashers on when I'm coming up to uh, a sign holder so that I acknowledge that I see their stop signs. That they see my four-ways on and they know I see the stop sign, I'm going to stop. So, so they don't have to worry about that. It also lets people behind me know that I'm coming to a stop. By the looks of it, uh, they're just cleaning up here now. See that guy cleaning up the cones there? I wonder what happened, because I came up here yesterday and there was uh, nothing going on then. Someone must have hit the ditch here overnight or something. The roads were good. They weren't slippery and they didn't get any snow. So I wonder what happened. Huh. Got three vehicles here and then they'll let me pass. You can see what's going on. People behind me have stopped so I can turn my four ways off so I don't have that annoying clicking. Oh, wait, now they're letting past. Nope. Tow truck's gonna jump out in front of me, that's okay. So you had one, two wreckers. Wherever this is here. Ah, that's what's going on. I know what's wrong with it. I ain't got no gas in it. Yikes, quite the operation to get him pulled out of there. Whew. 
I don't even want to know what that bill was. Yikes. Good job, guys. For those of you who aren't in trucking and don't know the costs of things in the industry, I'm gonna give you a roundabout ballpark number and people can correct me in the comment section if I'm way off. But I'm gonna go ahead and say that that rescue operation there, pulling that truck out with all those wreckers, probably ran that guy and his company, I'm gonna say five to $8,000. Am I way off? Somebody who runs a wrecking company or a tow truck driver, comment down below and let me know. There was what, two wreckers? A bunch of other material stuff there. I'm gonna say around $5,000, maybe eight, five to eight. Maybe I'm way off, I don't know. The same tow truck in front of me from before now put his four ways on as we're coming up to this construction zone. I'm wondering if he's planning on stopping in and saying hello here or why is... Because there was plenty of signs along the side of the road notifying everybody behind him that we're slowing down. There was no need to... Because if you put your hazards on like that, I'm assuming you're coming to a complete stop. No, he just turned him off. He was just slowing down. He was just obeying the posted speed limit signs. Okay, well, there's no need to put your four ways on then it confused me, but. <laughs> just a construction zone. I thought there might be another accident coming up or something. It's hard to know when to turn your four ways on and when not to. Different people do it differently. There's a big pile of snow. There's another big pile of snow. Together there, a really big pile of snow. So here's my trailer, I dropped it where they need it. That is Stonewall right over there. You can see the sign is right there, it says Stonewall. That's how you know I'm not lying to you. It's a wall of stone, Stonewall. I got this trailer here for them. They're gonna set it all up here tomorrow. And I'm headed back up to Norway House again tomorrow to grab another one, except the other one like this I'm bringing to Selkirk instead of here to Stonewall. It's just a little further that way down the road. So that'll take up my next two days and the rest of my week. Tomorrow's Thursday. The whole day will be us just bobtailing back up to Norway House. And then Friday will be the whole day us coming back down with another one of these. And that'll be that. There's some rocks over there. I wonder if that was once the stone wall.